I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. My name is Mike Scheidt and uh, I do guitar and vocals in Yob. When people listen to our new record, uh, Clearing a Path to Ascend, um, I'm not attached to any particular response to it. I mean, ideally someone would maybe feel better um, or it would make them uh, get lost in it. Maybe they lose themselves for a while. Um, that's our goal when we're playing the music, is to lose ourselves for a while. So I would hope that for someone else. But uh, whatever they take from it, on a, if it's just a visceral, it's heavy, and I love heavy, bassy music, then that's fine with me too. If someone is too personal and too messy and whatever, emotional, it's too emo, then that's whatever, it's, that's okay too. Yeah, this record is definitely more emotional uh, for me, I guess, because of where I was at when I wrote it and where I was at when I was writing the lyrics. But, you know, not, uh, I don't think negatively so. It's, it's meant to be positive or at least on the way towards a positive place. And so um, I would... Uh, yeah, there's there's definitely a, an emotional heaviness to it that I think is unique in our in the records that we've done so far. Yeah, I mean, I I write about you know if this is, I, I I guess I've said this a few times and recently, but I think it's it's true is if if no one's watching and no one is, is going to listen to anything that I write, what am I going to write? And so what I write about is where I'm at. And I write about what I'm working on or what I'm feeling or, uh, you know, I, I spend a fair amount of time sitting in meditation. I also have, uh, you know, uh, issues with depression and the two kind of help each other. And the music is part of my, my path to not only find just kind of a better sense of, uh, of space in the world, but also to help myself to to do things the way I'd like to do them. Yeah, it's you know it's it's tricky because um, if I I didn't have to paint a target on my chest, you know I mean I could have written about different things, darker subjects, things that are easier to talk about or easier to listen to, but that isn't. And I listen to a lot of music that's like that and love it. So it's not even um, right or wrong. Uh, it just so happens that I write about things that that it's like a finger pointing directly back at where my where my heart is. And uh, so yeah, then at that point when things are that tender, you touch it just a little bit and it hurts. But that's what I write about. So I I, I can understand someone not liking that, not being moved by it. It's a-okay, but once again, I'm writing it for me. I think that it's just, there's no escaping the darkness of this existence. I think there's a lot of beauty and incredible light as well, but that doesn't exist by itself. It's, it's part of us, period, and we all have it in one way or another, and so um, it's not about trying to fix it or trying to correct it. Um, it's about trying to get a better relationship to it and for me, being friendly with it so that it's on my side instead of uh, taking me out. Um, my favorite part of recording is 
the things they're the things that you plan for and so you rehearse and you spend a lot of time working on your songs and then you get in there and you lay them down as you intended but then there are also things that happen that you don't intend and uh, you know creative moments in the studio that um, on the spot uh, going for something question mark whatever it may be and you know having uh, things come out really well that are just spontaneous and really add a lot and then make the song grow and then they become part of the record forever or sometimes when you make a mistake or a slight misstep but it's it's cool and so then you keep it and then that becomes a part of the song too so the creative process in the studio is my favorite part of recording um, my least favorite part of recording is having to listen back to the songs over and over and over again and you get to the point where you, you kind of just don't even want to listen to your own music. I mean, you don't want to listen to your own music in general, but especially then, it's just like really the last thing that you want to do at a certain point. But then that's when it's most crucial to be listening nonstop and listening really carefully. And so that can be really difficult. You know, we've always just had guitar, bass, drums, one vocal. Um, we've talked periodically about having another guitarist. We've talked periodically about having, having another singer. We've talked periodically about having samples. But, but at the end of the day, we have kind of a domestic harmony between the three of us, and we've worked together for a good chunk of time now, and uh, we each know what, our, what we do in the band. And so there's one guitar, one bass, one drummer. There's no confusion there about what we're doing. And if we added another member, um, I mean, I'm sure we could work it in, but then that's also another entire human being and potential for new conflicts or new situations that, you know, we're, we're protective of our, our peace as a band. So that's kind of part of it. Um, I think the bands that got me into it that do it well are able to kind of conjure a sense of space and heaviness and emotion that is that's different than you know death metal or black metal which all of which have I'm most of my collection is that I mean I do have a lot of doom and stoner heavy blah 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 CDs but um, and records uh, but I have a lot of death metal a lot of black metal a lot of grind a lot of punk a lot of all, all sorts of things so um, you know, I, I do like the the compositional structure of of at least how we like to write our our, our doom metal music, and I do think there's a certain sense of kind of honesty in the riff because if you have a really fantastic drummer, you can maybe have a bunch of riffs that aren't that great, but if the speed and the technicality are there you can get away with a lot. Um, I think when you're playing really slow, the riff and the vibe has to really be there all the way or else it's immediately false and just noise and it, it doesn't work. Um, doesn't make it better, but it's different. I think the bands that are fast and shred that are able to conjure that ancient aura and vibe and that sense of uh, something that's an X factor that's kind of bigger than the riffs uh, is equally there as well. Well, I don't understand what there is to capitalize on because there's no money in it. I mean, even at our level, I mean, maybe a handful of bands in our scene, but they've also been around for a long time. And they put in their time, and if there is any money to be made by them just doing what they were already doing, naturally, when there was no money, when there was hardly any crowds ever, and now that it's come around, to me, for a bunch of people that are new to the style that discover sleep and think they're amazing, that just makes a lot of sense. I've thought that they were amazing for the last 20 plus years. So for more people to figure it out and then to have sleep as a band, as individuals, as artists benefit from that, why would anyone want to take that away from them or criticize that? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then as far as people climbing on a so-called bandwagon, um, a band like Sleep's a real anomaly of a band that can be in our scene and do maybe what things that would truly be considered bigger or, or maybe profitable or whatever. I don't know what their business is. I just know I still love their band. Uh, 
but as as far as other people wanting to play this style of music you know we don't we don't get to have our little boxes of things that we get to protect and keep small and personal for ourselves i mean it's just it's just you get disappointed over and over and over again because things that are good and things that are authentic and real and true are going to resonate with people on a, on a core level. Um, and even if what they're trying to be, if they are not, uh, I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but, but I, I'm trying to get to a point here. Um, what's wrong with playing the music you want to play? You know, and if a lot of other people are doing it and it makes you excited to do it yourself, What's the problem? I mean, at that point, it's like electric guitars are trendy. I mean, everyone's playing them. You know, it's like at what point do you draw the line and just lighten up a little bit? Some of my very, very favorite music comes from Europe and the UK. And so being able to go and visit places where some of my favorite artists create what they do. Um, also, I'm very romantic about that and be able to play in London and play in certain clubs that I've you know, read about for a long time in fanzines and mags from when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, um, on a, just a kid musician level, it just brings that right back for me. And then, uh, um, you know, also being exposed to music that you wouldn't see or hear anywhere else, um, things that don't get here very often, but we get to go over there and see it. So as a fan, being able to watch all the bands play, um, and experience those environments for ourselves. It's, it's, it's a total experience. I mean, I guess our biz biggest success is that we're still doing it. I mean, and uh, I feel like we're still doing it in the spirit in which we started. Um, we've never been, even though we've done some, some things that are surprising, uh, particularly to us, um, we still are not an ambitious band. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not, we don't have the five-year plan or the 10-year plan. We don't have any kind of hope in the sense that we're going to get somewhere doing what we're doing other than the work that we're doing internally with the music and then the opportunities that come up. Um, each one, we've just been lucky enough to look at the opportunities and say, can we do this? Can't we do that? And then do we need to grow in order to do this? And then if we do, then we'll put in the work to do that. But it's really a very kind of short term thing, you know, we just do it in the moment. And so I feel like that's how it's always been. And uh, I think that's how we'll continue. It's always, we always at this point, especially now we've been around for 15 or 16 years, we never know how much longer it's going to go. You know, is there another album in us? We don't know. Um, so let's be here. Let's enjoy the fact that we get to play. Uh, let's enjoy this time. Uh, it won't be forever and so uh, that's pretty much it I mean as far as our biggest failures I don't know man I mean I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a lot of them really I mean but you know I think maybe uh, the path that we've carved out for ourselves in our style sometimes feels like we're uh, we've maybe separated ourselves out in our subject matter and the, what we sing about and that that for some folks that's just hard to listen to and uh, um, so but there, there's no other way we uh, that it could have been done um, there's no other way and so um, I don't dwell really on the past and I don't really ruminate too much on the future other than just making sure whatever we do is done as, as well as we can do it and that we do it with you know, a, a good sense of heart with whoever it is that we're working with so that they feel good too um, and that it is a communal experience, it's a communal effort and it's not just about us.